Guys, we've got the Arma Big Rock 6S Monster Truck on the bench, and today we're gonna to be taking a deep dive looking at everything that's brand new on this truck, some things that aren't, and then we're gonna take this thing out and bash it. Now make sure you get subscribed because I've got big plans for this Big Rock, and this thing is not gonna stay stock for very long. Let's take a look inside. First thing I wanna talk about is this beautiful body. This thing is absolutely incredible. I looked online, this thing has over 40 different pieces to it, and you can really see that when you look at the underside of it. There is a ton of reinforcement, and this body is really heavy. Hopefully all this reinforcement will make this body really strong. We've got a clipless design in the front with clips in the back. The front bumper integrates in with the truck's front bumper. And overall, I think they've done a really beautiful job with this truck. Not a whole bunch of greebling on here, very clean, Love it. Under the hood, we've got a very familiar layout with some updates that I'm pretty excited about. We've got some updates to the servo. We've got some updates to the differentials. We're gonna take both of those apart in a minute. I see some updated screws here on the center differential. That's really nice to see. Hopefully those don't strip out like the old ones did. We've got this really cool V2 150 amp ESC. I'm excited to see how this ESC handles the weight of this truck, especially with what we're gonna be doing with it. Also got some brand new tires on here. Let's take one of these off and take a closer look at it. Behind this tire, we've got a new design for the rear hub we're gonna be taking a closer look at in a minute as well. These are the brand new eight scale Ragnarok tires. They look a lot like the tires on the 110 scale vehicles, of course, a lot bigger. These tires are vented, the wheels are not vented. These are brand new wheels as well. I think they look really nice and should fit the style of the truck well. Taking a look at these compared to a Creighton tire, you can see that they are pretty close to the same size. Although surprisingly, the Creighton tire is a little bit taller and a little bit wider. Given that this is a bigger truck, I would have expected these tires to be bigger, but this is the size they went with. We are gonna be putting bigger tires on this truck with my big plans in the future, so make sure you stay tuned for that. This rear hub is a brand new part number we've never seen before. Comparing it to the previous version rear hub, it looks pretty similar in just about every way and dimension, except for right here on the bottom. You can see that there's quite a bit more meat around where the bottom pin goes through. It's a bit more obvious from the side. Now that's interesting, but the differentials have been updated too, and I'm really curious to see what they've done with that. The way this bumper is designed means you gotta get a couple screws out from the backside of this shock tower in order to get this differential cover off. So if you don't already have a set of these ball tip hex drivers, make sure you get some because you're gonna need them. All right, we finally got access to this differential cover. So in this truck, we have the 29 millimeter EXB spec differentials. They don't call them EXB differentials. And in the front and rear, they don't have limited slip. Feels like we've got about 100K in this one. There's one major difference and that's these output cups. Taking a look at these output cups, they look pretty similar to the old ones, but if we take a look at an original output cup, you can see just how much longer these new output cups are. Basically, this part that isn't machined is new. They've probably done this because a lot of people had problems with the CVDs and dog bones popping out of these original drive cups. Hopefully these longer drive cups will stop that from happening. Let's get this back in the truck and then I wanna see inside that new servo. Underneath this truck on the rear bumper and the front bumper, they're using EXB style bumper mounts, which I think is really nice because it has included skid plates front and rear. Nice touch. Horizon has given up their proprietary 23 tooth servos and servo horns for standard 25 tooth. That's really nice to see. This is the brand new Spectrum S665 servo. It's got a metal case on it with a plastic top and bottom. Let's see what they've got inside this thing. We do have little washers on the screws, which means they are making an effort to waterproof this the right way. All right, as expected, we have a brushed motor. You can tell because there's just two wires going to it. it is a pretty beefy looking brushed motor though. And we've got some more attempt at waterproofing here, as well as an O-ring on the bottom case. Let's take a look at those gears. All right, so we have got a nice beefy steel output gear and most of the other gears are also steel. We've got a couple of brass gears early in the gear train in there. That's not a huge deal because those don't see a lot of load, but overall we got a nice ball bearing in the top and an O-ring sealing that ball bearing as well. So this looks like it's gonna be a pretty decent servo. So there we go, guys. That's a close look at just about every new thing on the new Arma Big Rock 6S. Now let's go ahead and get the battery put inside this thing, see how it stands up to some bashing and crashing. And when we get back, I'm gonna give you my first impressions on this. And then of course, we're gonna have a little chat about the elephant in the room. Now, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you get subscribed because we've got a lot more of this coming up and I've got big plans for this Big Rock coming up in the next video. Let's go bash. All right, first off, let's get a top speed run. This is stock gearing 6S, what you can expect off-road out of the box. Oh. 
One more pass. All right, let's bring it in and see what we got. 49 miles an hour, almost 50 miles an hour out of the box. That's not too bad, and this thing seems pretty stable. All right, let's see how durable it is. Let's go bash. I got a couple packs for this now and so far it's pretty fun. The body seems quite durable. Haven't really had any issues with it. I have gotten a couple of little bangs and nicks over here in the back and it does tend to pop out of the front and here on the sides occasionally on a bad landing. But overall, it's held up pretty well and I'm pretty impressed with it. I will say though, I think this body is probably also this truck's downfall. This body is extremely heavy and it makes the truck fairly top heavy, which kind of takes away from what this truck is really good at. This truck really isn't that great at jumping Jumping. It can jump high, but you don't have a lot of air control, especially with the stock gearing and these stock tires. It can barely do a backflip out of the box. But again, that's not really what this is for. This is designed for high speed bashing around. It's long wheelbase. It's stable. This thing will do almost 50 miles an hour out of the box, but this body also makes it top heavy, which makes it want to tip over. That being said, I've beaten on this chassis pretty hard for a couple of packs now. Nothing has broken. I'm not going to do an all out durability test on this because this is the same platform I've seen on a bunch of other vehicles and I know what's going to break. Eventually, we're going to break an arm. We'll bend some drive shafts. We could probably bend the chassis if we tried hard enough. But again, I don't really think that's what this truck is designed for. This is designed for kind of scale, bombing around, and just having a good time. And for that, it's actually really good. This S665 servo is both fast and powerful. I see no reason to replace it unless it breaks. This ESC and motor are both reasonably well paired for this setup. Even after a full pack of bashing in 80 degree weather, they stayed nice and cool. I think there's a lot of headroom on and we're going to find out about that headroom in the next video. These tires are good. They get nice grip, but not so much grip that it's constantly traction rolling. And overall, I think it's a really fun car. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the new EXB RTR Creighton that just came out. That car has some updates to it that this car doesn't have. And that I think every new car in the future is going to have. That includes a two-piece tower to tower brace, a new updated servo saver, updated center braces, updated ends to these links, front and rear, updated sway bar end links, and a few other nice to have bits and pieces. I'm not going to pretend I know why Horizon decided not to include those updates in this car, even though it came out just before the EXB and it costs as much as the EXB. I'm sure they had their reasons. That being said, it is disappointing not to see those parts in a car this expensive. It's also disappointing to see this SLT3 transmitter in a car this expensive, especially when the EXB comes with the DX3. That being said, this body is worth a lot of money. It's a really nice body. It looks amazing. It actually is pretty durable. And this is probably where the money's going on this truck. So do I think you should buy an Arma Big Rock 6S? Well, at $700, I'm gonna say no. The reason is because I can almost guarantee you this is going to be coming down in price and probably coming down in price soon. At $600, if you like the way this thing looks, it definitely could be a good option. I think it's a lot more fun than the Fire Team was, but it has a similar driving style to the Fire Team. And overall, it's a pretty good truck. Now, pretty good isn't good enough for me. In the next video, we're going to be taking this thing and making it a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you want to see that, make sure you get subscribed, hit that bell to get notified. Let me know what you think about this truck down in the comments and then check out this video.